What's the most Michael Scott-ish thing your boss ever did? Every year representatives from my old company would attend the International Bridge Conference in Pittsburgh. The first year I went, my boss got me all hyped because there is apparently a restaurant in Pittsburgh that it was his tradition to go to every year when he was there for the conference. He kept saying how exciting it was that he could introduce me to the tradition, so I figured it had to be some awesome unknown local gem, or at the very least a Pittsburgh icon like Bramante Brothers. It was the subway across from the convention center. As a blizzard approached, he offered to drive home anybody who needed a ride, because he'd just bought a new badass Hummer H2 that could drive through anything. An hour later, he and three of my coworkers are sitting in his new sub in a snow drift on the side of the road, waiting for the wife of one of them to pick them up. My boss put candles in his dishwasher to clean them, and they ended up melting and distributing a thin layer of wax over everything. Mandatory staff appreciation day, it fell on my day off, and I had to come in, to participate in the team building activities that were scheduled. It went from 7am to 7pm, which was longer than a normal shift, that was my only day off that week. It's either the time he talked about his divorce to a couple trying to rent tuxedos from us, or the time when an African American couple walked in. He switched from the normal greeting. Welcome to Tuxedo's daughter what's up brother. My one boss, an absolute nightmare of a human, carried all of his paperwork around in a black trash bag, and he was rich, like filthy rich, he inherited his father's contracting company, and during the boom of the early 2000s made a ton of money, but he said he didn't trust briefcases, yeah, I know, so one night he left his trash case in an office and a cleaning woman threw it out, all contracts. Building specs, whatever, gone. A few coworkers and I competed in a local office themed trivia contest. We came in second place, and one of the prizes was a world's best boss mug. We brought it into work, and displayed it proudly like a trophy in one of our offices. My boss who was not involved in the contest, has never seen the office, is not friends with or well liked by any of us and is a huge idiot saw the mug in someone else's office and just took it. None of us could figure out where it had gone, until we saw her drinking out of it. It was this guy's last day with the company, and the managers brought in a cake for everyone to share, a very nice farewell gesture, except he wasn't moving to a new city, or leaving the company for a new job. He had gotten fired, the managers literally fired this guy, then called everyone into the kitchen and said okay. Today is Steve's last day with the company. Let's have some cake. Most oblivious. Socially awkward. Tone deaf moment imaginable. My coworker was sad because a project failed. Our supervisor took him to McDonald's for ice cream. My boss took us to a farmer's market for an office lunch outing. And when me and my two coworkers walked over to his table after having browsed and eaten, he told his attorney friend he was with they don't like to be too far from daddy. I post this story 3 years ago, and I still giggle when I think about it. I had a boss who got a promotion to senior manager. The very next day he pulled into the parking lot with a BMW 1 Series. No one on my team even knew they made a 1 Series, cheapest possible BMW slash badge car. He gets out wearing a BMW polo and a white BMW hat. He offered to take me to lunch in it. He jumps on the highway adjusts his BMW hat, and says to me, I don't exactly do 60 in this thing, does a little triumphant laughter and starts going 80, there was a cop on the bridge above us, we were immediately pulled over, I will never forget the look of defeat on his face. He was approved to buy a furniture set for our new office waiting room he bought one then took it home, and brought his old living room furniture for the office to use. Then when they shut that office down a year later he took his old furniture back instead of letting them take it to the new office location. After a successful project, owner of the company invited everyone out to lunch, about 12 employees, at a nearby restaurant by the office. Little did she know, the place was very expensive. So she bounces early before the check comes, stating that she had a client call. She gives us money, to pay for her meal and takes off leaving the rest of us to figure out the check. It also turns out she didn't give us enough money to pay for her portion of the check so someone had to throw in a few extra bucks to cover that. Pick one. One for a solid three months last winter. 
Every time a female in the office would wear boots, he would say that they reminded him of Hitler boots. He would then march in a circle around the office with the Nazi salute, high step, and screaming gibberish. This was typically followed by him giggling thinking he was funny, while everyone in the office would cringe and or try to ignore him. Two we were very close to getting a very big client in a nation country. We ended up losing the client because he did his racist Asian impression, very similar to Michael Scott's ping to the guy over the phone without realizing that the guy was Asian himself. 3. There is a very large list of words that he always mispronounces. We actually have a notebook where we record his pronunciation of these words as well as a variety of super weird boss's name isms that he likes to use. My boss would confuse the word fillet and fallet. I about lost it a few times when he came up and said if we don't get 30 done by the deadline they are going to fell at us in the next meeting. Wore a tuxedo at work lunch to give out superlative type rewards. The lunch was at a local sports bar. He had never seen the office. Made someone come with him to get his shoes shined because he wanted someone to talk to except we all wore sneakers. So the lucky guy got to just stand there and wait while he got his shoe shine. We work in digital marketing. He stalks our coworkers on social media and brings up their posts at weird times. We'll be in a meeting and he'll bring up someone's weekend plans from a month ago in front of everyone. Most of the time he's not even friends with these people. It's so awkward and cringy. He cooked us lunch. This was at a mattress store. This was meant to be a reward slash incentive because, quote, he was a freaking good cook. He would cook us the freaking best meal yous have ever eaten. He built it up all week. We did not have the facilities for cooking. So he cooked us chicken burgers in a vertical grill. Dodgy, pub grade chicken burgers. That only the dodgiest, scummiest pub would ever sell us like their Tuesday $5 lunch special. Later. When he was out of the store, because he was always out of the store, we were out the back all smoking, and we just sort look at each other, I said, we, we only ate that out of sympathy, right, yeah. I honestly don't know if this is Michael Scott behavior, but this was absolutely bat crap insane, and I don't know how else to categorize it. Context, we were having an all hands meeting where the CEO of a small company, 50 Aish employees, announced that he had just fired the CFO for embezzlement. We all knew he was full of crap and he fired the CFO because she disagreed with the decision. Anyhow, right after he announced this, he offered $100 as a morale booster to anyone who could sing the entire Tiger song from Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, so, one brave girl gets up and starts singing the whole song. She gets to the last line and messes up one word. The CEO says that it doesn't count, pockets his own $100 bill, then proceeds to sing and dance to the whole song while we stand there, watching him, mouths agape, when he finishes, striking a maniacal pose with and I'm the only one, we are all eerily silent. He then straightens up, unbuttons his suit jacket, and shows us the lyrics to the song have been embroidered on the inner lining. I'm 40 years old and have been working as a professional for 22 years. I've seen some crap, but I've never seen anything remotely as crazy as this. And I pray that I never do again. Not my boss, but a guy created a few scholarships at the university I was at. And then something weird happened. Like they were supposed to be 4 year deals, but he only had the money for 1 year. Anyways, when it happened I remembered someone saying he Scott's tot said them. Asked an interviewee, aren't you a little old for it? We legitimately had to lay off 4 people last year, and management decided to wait until the day before the Halloween office party to do it. No joke, it was like the Halloween episode in real life. This is a story from my brother, he works at a credit union, and one morning around 10 his boss walks out of his office asking if anyone wants the other half he cut off of this huge brand muffin he had for breakfast. Everyone there said they were fine and the boss went back into his office. Later, around 12, an employee comes in for her shift with a box full of donuts to share with the office. Everyone came up and took one thanking the employee for bringing in the treat. The boss was visibly mad that everyone went for the donuts and no one wanted his half of his brand muffin. He was just a big grump for the rest of the day. 
ranked all seven of us in order of his most favorite to least favorite. My boss's boss saw a black guy walking down the hallway at work with his hoodie up. He proceeded to say hands up, don't shoot, no one really knew what to say, and the guy with his hoodie up was just cold. Black customer came in the store, said how's it going mon, like a Jamaican accent, but just on the mon part. He also followed customers around, and gave them high fives on their purchasing choices. If we closed the store, we wouldn't get out for 2 hours after close. When I eventually learned how to close, I could get out within 20 minutes. My belief was he was married to a real Jan, and he didn't want to go home. Got the go ahead from corporate to buy a new coffee machine for the office. Bought a new Keurig, took it home, and brought in his own old coffee machine for the staff to use. Terrible person, you know who you are. On my last day at a sucky catering job, my boss gave me an ultimatum, work the rest of the night, or record me embarrassingly doing the doggy and post it on Snapchat. Shortest shift I ever worked. We had mice. Boss man was terrified of mice and a total skinflint who didn't want to pay for an exterminator. His big idea, I crap you not, was to give me cotton, to put in my ears and a blow horn. He then opened the back door, closed all other doors in the little shop, and I had to attempt to herd mice out of the store with a freaking air horn, with cotton balls sticking out of my ears. I tried to explain why it wouldn't work, but he essentially told me not to worry my pretty little head over it, and that was my entire afternoon. Most ridiculous crap I've ever done at a job ever before, and ever since. I had a boss that was much older than I was, and he resented the fact that I was more competent slash efficient than him. Mid-year review. Boss, I tried to fire you twice. Me, what? Why? Boss, my boss wouldn't let me. Me, but, like, what did I do? Boss, I don't want to talk about it. Me, okay, that's not helpful. If you don't tell me what I did, there's no way I can correct the behavior. Boss, I don't like the way you talk to me sometimes. Me, Jim face at camera. Announced it to everyone if he got laid the previous night. Fortunately it wasn't that often. I handed him an aerial image I had printed. He told me I needed to reprint it, and rotate it 180. I walked to my cubicle, waited a minute, handed it back to him right side up. His reply, perfect. I worked in it. Boss says, I want someone with a clipboard to go into the server room each morning. Me, whatever for. Boss, they need to mark all the green lights they see on the servers. Me, why? Boss, that way we know our servers are working. I wish I was making that up. My supervisor left to start his own software company. They subleased their office from my employer. When the company failed, my employer hired him back along with several of his employees. Said she was going to bring food for our training day, then showed up with with several open bags of chips and a two year old box of hot pockets her daughter wouldn't eat so. We had nothing to eat, but garbage that day. I'm proud to say I was pivotal in getting her fired. I found another job, and turned in my two weeks, expecting to be walked out the door that day, instead I was ushered into the CEO's office, and met with him, and the general manager, they were deeply concerned, that a good employee would suddenly go to a competitor out of the blue, I explained to them, that incident and several other things that happened, and told them I don't work for dirt bags as I was telling them about the incidents, a deep red color crept up the CEO's neck, and across his face, he was so freaking mad. He asked me if I would stay to talk about further employment. Just give him a few minutes to take care of this. She was walked out, bitching and crying. Her friend that got her hired was demoted and later quit. I got a raise and still work there. I'm under strict instructions to barge into the CEO's office if anything like that happens again. Told everyone to go home cause we weren't making sales. Then scolded us for getting up and starting to walk out, saying we should be fighting for out seats. Like Mathurfrika we are cold calling here for commission only we aren't gonna fight for crap. During an unplanned fire drill, he made a joke about the possibility of an active shooter. It made everyone very uncomfortable. She told me I could take a day off when I was dealing with some severe insomnia problems. Then came running into my office 5 minutes later, to say too many people had the day off already, 2 people, 
whose jobs didn't overlap with mine. Turns out it was because she wanted to take a half day and didn't want the place to look unstaffed. Yesterday however she did take the day off when multiple other people were out and left us with just two people of six. She has also brought in her soy milk maker into the office and kept talking about it. She was also using the lunchroom toaster oven to make cakes, but not for us. She also just last week started telling people all about her duty, in particular in front of the brand new employee that was at that moment being introduced to her. She also buys food for her daughters using the company credit card when she is supposed to be out shopping for things for the company. So far she has not been caught. Oh and most recently she asked a co-worker to try not to schedule her mother's funeral anywhere within the three week span that she would be taking her vacation because that wouldn't be convenient. She said it somewhat, but not completely, jokingly, but brought it up more than once. I could go on. She's like the more malicious version of Michael Scott you see in the earliest episodes. This needs to be a subreddit. First morning of the summer camp I worked at. Our camp director brings the campers, first through third graders, to the basketball court, gives a fun speech, while bouncing a kickball around, to kick off the camp, ends it with alright guys let's, have a great summer, and punts the kickball, accidentally, straight into a first graders, face who falls to the ground and starts crying very loudly, this is just the first one I thought of, I was making the Michael Scott comparisons from the first day I met him. Not too bad, but she walked around the office wishing everyone a Merry Christmas, before she left for a vacation. Got to my cube, paused, and gave me a quisitive look, understanding why the hesitation. I told her, I'm not Jewish. She's like okay Merry Christmas. My manager tried to get the nickname he had chosen for himself to catch on. The nickname in question was Hollywood. He would introduce himself to new worker slash visitor slash etc. As Hollywood. One of us would say no one calls him that, and he would just be like well, everyone calls me that. I had a boss, Dave, who was head of sales, and he was notorious for taking people's food out of the fridge, or off their desk to eat, right in front of them. He was also always late for meetings. Well one day we were sitting in an all managers meeting, and Dave comes in late as usual with his always present cup of coffee and sits down. There was a small lull in the meeting and Dave looks across the table at Catty, who just had a baby, and says, Catty, I hope you don't mind, but I use the rest of your milk in the fridge. Catty turned pale, and looked at him with the most embarrassed and angry look and said, That's my breast milk I have been pumping for my baby. Dave just sat there, looked a square in the eye, and without breaking his gaze sipped his coffee the rest of the meeting. Had us rank each other in order from 1 to 20 of who is the overall hardest worker, told us no one would know the results. Next day, reads the order out loud. The people ranked 15, 20 now knew what everyone thought of them, killed staff morale. I knew there would finally be a perfect time and place for me to share this story. I used to work for a Broadway theater producer, and we were in a meeting about the ADA, the act that requires places of business to accommodate the disabled, like Michael Scott. RVP had come to his position through no merits of his own, and had no idea what he was doing, let alone how to run a meeting. So he starts us off with okay, so we are going to go around, and I want us all to share if we know someone who's disabled. It was just like when Ed Truck dies and he's asking people to share stories of loved ones dying, as people are awkwardly sharing. Our boss is completely detached from the tau genes of the subject. Every time someone talks about their crippled granny or terminally ill cousin, he's like this is good. Really getting the juices flowing here. One of the senior managers said well, boss, as you know my uncle had Parkinson's to which my boss replies are great. Was he in a wheelchair? Then we watch the office industrial the adder puts out. Specifically the scene on wheelchairs bound customers. As it finishes and we are talking, the next chapter starts up on the projector. It's midgets. Our boss stops the meeting, and is like ooh midgets we have to watch. So then we watched midgets. It was not a productive meeting. She would do almost no work at all. She would come into our offices and bother us, while we were working talking about how bored she was, and how we should redecorate our offices. Any work she got, she would just forward the emails to someone, and never even read them herself. 
Then she would decide often how we needed to change the furniture in her office, move things around, paint a wall in her office. She would call meetings three times a day to talk about nonsense and they would go for about an hour each time on nothing. This is previous job but some examples. One of my co-workers is black and loves chocolate. He was talking to the boss one day and mentioned something along the lines of wishing he had some chocolate right now. Boss, who needs that when we got some milk chocolate right here? Referring to my co-worker. Another time. It was the Friday before a long weekend, and I was getting ready to head out. He comes up to me, and asks me what I'm up to. I said not too much, hoping for a relaxing weekend. He then makes a masturbation motion with his hands and goes, Make sure you don't too much relax in a. One of my co-workers was having a fight with her boyfriend, and was telling me about it. He walks by, and listens in on the conversation, and goes oh I know someone who's not getting laid tonight. We went to a work event, and one of the team building exercises was that you and your colleagues are stuck on a desert island with specific items and you have to figure out how to use them to survive together. At the end of the exercise, when it came time for us to describe our strategies, he referred to one of the groups that had one girl and five guys in it, going and these guys have one woman and a bunch of dudes, I think we all know what that means. He was a character lol. Not a bad guy by any means and he's generally fairly nice and considerate. Just, really tone deaf and inappropriate sometimes. Told him my parents names, my dad has a traditionally feminine name, and he said, No wonder you're confused. Both your parents have lady names. I really regret coming out to him. I'm basically Oscar Martinez to his Michael Scott. We had this new girl hostess start working at my job, and she was a pretty 20 something girl with a pretty big butt. So one day good doll bossman walks into the dining area, and sees the new girl, and says out loud hey Chloe did they paint those pants on you in front of a table she was working at, and she ended up crying, and left the job not too long after that. Bowers mandated personal development course. They did them every year, and they always centered around not discriminating in some way, based on gender age, religion, etc. Well one year, they had a new lady in charge of it. The topic was invisible disabilities. Basically some form of disability which is not visually apparent, OCD, at developmental disorders, etc. The task we had was to write down a list of challenges a person with a disability might face in everyday life. Then we had to act out a scene showing how these challenges would affect them. We asked her to clarify, and it became apparent she was literally asking us to stereotype disabled people and basically mock their daily lives. That our lady was not present for any of the future rounds of training. We had a particularly demanding client and a couple of the project managers were having trouble keeping him pleased. After hearing them complain, Larry, the boss, pulled out his flip phone and said let's call him right now and put him on speakerphone. After making a show of being the tough guy, and putting him in his place, he got in the last word, flipped the phone closed, and put it in his shirt pocket. He proudly told the room you see, that's how you handle an asshole. Then, from his pocket, we heard I'm still here, sir. Larry fumbled for his phone while stammering, hung it up correctly, and dismissed us. At a phone store I worked at our boss constantly reminded us to wipe the memory of every display phone or phone customers had returned. Anything that could have customer details. He hammered this in. He sold a fellow employee one of his old phones. Didn't wipe it. On the phone were pictures of him sucking on toys. Had a good sales day. Went to get celebratory lunch. Check comes. You got this. Right? My boss regularly walks around, and fake fires any new hire to frick with them. Did it to me, and I was devastated before someone told me. He once said in a meeting, that he started watching The Office. But it was hard to watch, because he recognized himself as Michael. Spoiler, he's not as likable. He has suits that are themed to holidays. A Christmas suit. A shamrock suit. A pink Valentine's Day suit. A patriotic Independence Day suit. And my favorite. His birthday suit which is decorated like an 80's wallpaper, think that restaurant from Saved by the Bell. Sometimes he'll wear the same suit multiple times near a holiday, to get maximum exposure of people who see him, when he's not feeling broke. His street, 
Patrick's Day suit has a gold pot accessory that he will fill up with gold coins and give them away to random people. Random means girls slash women that are too young and or out of his league. I saw him run to intercept a woman he was obsessed with after seeing her on our group walks a few times. For a very weird period of time, he was growing his hair out. He started telling people that he would get his hair cut when he finally got some action. Then kept repeatedly mentioning things like meeting a new woman tonight. Hope I get a haircut. Haha. Ha. Is this too long? I can't stop. He wears a fedora. Once he asked me about it, and I told him that it was actually impolite to wear a hat indoors according to the website I looked it up on. And he was very sad. But then later decided he didn't care and kept wearing it. A black and grey pinstriped fedora. Often with dad jeans and a polo slash short sleeve button down. He dressed up as Santa for one of our holiday parties. Then photoshopped himself into a pic with Santa where he was giving himself gotcha finger guns. He gets these shutterfly photo books made with a cringiest captions. And puts them in the break room for all to see. In one picture. He captioned it as skinny dipping. And the photo had no parts. But was taken at an angle down his hip slash leg. When he goes on vacation. He likes to announce it in our publicly broadcast meetings. Then he'll also thank his brother for house sitting. To confuse the potential burglars. He has a personal website with an awful resume. He does Toastmasters and posts all his powerpoints on there. Including ones that reference his ex-wife and their sex life issues. He once showed a video at an all-staff meeting where he was wearing his money suit. Forgot one from earlier. And talking about Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. This has nothing to do with our job and the video is Sue Michael Scott. He gets up at the end, and reveals he is only wearing the suit top and boxes. The first line of the video is coming to you live from New York. I'm Johnny Cash, and I'm here to talk to you about money. Holds up stack of bills. Awkward pause sure. Those are just ones. And I'm really not Johnny Cash.
Make sure to like and subscribe so we can watch together.